I'm from the Swedish Agency for Work Environment Expertise, and I will present the results from this systematic review. And it was uh, produced by Professor Gunnar Aronsson at Stockholm University and Professor Ulf Lundberg at Stockholm University on the behalf of our agency. And the purpose was to increase the, the knowledge about how work environment is affected when working remotely. Uh, partly uh, during the conditions that was pre-pandemic and conditions that was prevailing during the pandemic. And we looked at three areas, uh, psychosocial work environment and health, work-life balance and productivity. And the systematic review consists of two parts, where one part looked at uh, literature before the pandemic. So it was, uh, there we only looked at reviews. So it's a review of uh, systematic reviews. And it's based on 202 original articles. And then for part two, we looked at studies that were conducted during the pandemic. And here you can notice that the last year of the pandemic, uh, 2022, is not included in this study. So it's the first two years of the pandemic. And it was from 2005 up until the start of the pandemic. So I move directly to the results. And the advantages could be summarized uh, as this. Uh, the most positive and clear result uh, were that remote work provided increased flexibility and this facilitated a better work-life balance. And it was also positive for work engagement, which is not an obvious result for me. Uh, and it's increased workflow and also increased connectivity, how easy and it is to, for employees to reach one another. And that's another result that is not maybe intuitive, that when you move from the physical space together and separate, you get better connectivity. And this was also favorable at wor working remotely when you looked at different health outcomes. And productivity was often judged to be higher when working from home. But if employees lack the right prerequisites, productivity instead usually uh, was negatively affected. And so, for the disadvantages, um, a lack of communication and technical problems were the most frequent negative results. And there was also diffuse boundaries between uh, homes, um, between private life and working life. And this uh, could also increase the risk of working outside of normal working hours, which could lead to fatigue and increase mental demands. So the greater the freedom, the harder it is to free oneself from work. And as some of you might know, it also goes under the name of the autonomy paradox. Uh, it was also increased risk of social isolation and reduced and inadequate contacts with colleagues and managers. So the conditions for remote work, for, for it to function well, so autonomy in connection with remote work is vital for, to get a, for it to function well. And a functioning autonomy reduces the connection between stress and remote work that you could otherwise see. And it increased job satisfaction when working remotely and also increased commitment to work. So, and inter interpersonal relationships and collegial support are important prerequisites for remote work to function well. So you need to be able to, to move those with you to the digital space. And individual differences and personalities can have a larger impact when working remotely, it seems like. So an, an obvious example, for instance, is uh, remote work can be problematic for people that have a strong need for social connections. But there are a lot of different variables that could 
come into play here. So now to the results of the studies that were conducted during the pandemic with the specific conditions that was prevailing during the pandemic. For psychosocial work environment and health, uh, the effect of problematic and good working condition um, respectively seem to be amplified for working remotely from home. So if you already have a good environment, it got even better when you moved it to working remotely. But if you had a bad work environment with problems, it, you, you, you got in the other direction. It got even worse when moving it uh, home, which is interesting. So when working remotely at home, uh, a prerequisite for autonomy and self-determination is that the worker has access to the resources that he needed to carry out the work and the skills needed to be able to work independently. So delegated or false autonomy in the sense that the worker is left to fend for herself, himself, without having these prerequisites instead leads to negative consequences in form of reduced psychological well-being. So for the managers, there were not a lot of studies uh, that we found, uh, but they indicated that they got very tied to the computer and overloaded by virtual meetings. And despite this, manager uh, perceived that they didn't have enough contact with the employees. Manager were also reporting to have difficulty to assess how the staff were feeling and determining um, individual employees' needs and help for support. So for the productivity, uh, most studies pointed to increased productivity when working remotely from home. However, one reason could be that uh, it's simply more worked hours. So instead of the commute, you, you work these hours. But here we, we need to dig into the material more, more deeply to understand what this productivity comes from. But still, uh, a correlation was found between productivity with cohesion and the ability to maintain good contacts with colleagues during remote work, having your own workplace at home, this autonomy that keeps coming up everywhere as a really vital aspect, and a task and relation relationship-oriented leadership. And reduced productivity is uh, associated with lack of tasks, uh, poorer resources at home, uh, younger children living at home, and that's for the international, or, or basically Sweden deviates from this picture, and I, I will get back to this. So every other country, this seems to be the case. Um, those who um, were disturbed, insecure, and isolated reported poorer productivity. So work-life balance, uh, international, so the results consistently show that in families with younger children, uh, both the balance between work and private life and self-estimated productivity are negatively affected. Some results uh, point to the fact that the stress decreased a little bit over time, but if you had small children, it was a continued high burden during the whole pandemic. So now, to the work-life balance uh, in Sweden. So Sweden deviates from this negative picture in the international studies, but it's important to notice here that oh, there were no uh, peer-reviewed scientific published articles about studies in Sweden in this compilation. So here we, we wanted to make this comparison, so we did con uh, extra searches for grey literature, and we found uh, what has sufficient quality, which was mostly uh, service uh, made, made by the trade unions. So there's the results from this aspect, what regard to Sweden, comes from this. Um, and here is, it's just that a very positive attitude towards remarking remotely among parents with children. And this particularly uh, applies to female studio participants. 
So in contrast to virtually all other countries, Sweden did not close down childcare or lower level of schooling. And this indicates that this is the main variable that makes Sweden deviate from this negative picture instead of this positive picture. So there might also be other factors that we are more positive here to working remotely. So many employees had previously experience with remote work. Uh, we have uh, a good broadband connection, it's well, well developed. And many employees uh, also have experience with working with computers for a long time and are used to the independence required to remote work. And despite, uh, for the international, despite this more negative picture, there's still a tendency that one wants to try out and work more remotely from home, at least a few days a week. So conditions for remote work to function, to conclude, caring for children at home in combination with paid work is not a viable arrangement. So remote work must be concentrated on the types of work and tasks where it is particularly appropriated, and education can expand those opportunities. But here more research is needed. Uh, but we know that this autonomy and professional skills are particularly important factors. And employees' needs and conditions vary, which should be taken into account when making arrangement with individual employees. And any long-term uh, disadvantages needs to be followed up. So here's the gray literature for the Swedish result, for the Swedish comparison. So it's mainly trade unions result. And I'll see I um, don't have so much time. And here's just some information about the recruitments for the studies and the study design. So I'll go to thank you. Thank you.